Hello, hello, hello. Hello, any returning viewers. I hope you're out, still out there. I am here, I am here, I am here. You know, as the poet Langston Hughes wrote, the sun done baked me, the cold done freeze me, but I'm still here. I'm still here, sweet baby. Well, he probably wouldn't recognize those lines exactly like that. But, you know, it's paraphrases in the neighborhood. So, I am still here uh, in a different area of my home. I had to do some readjusting once again. I am back down in the basement. I'm in an open area. Um, I still have the other area, but not as much. I have kind of... I'm trying to get my husband more room in his little area over there. So I've, I'm trying to move things out. And so we've once again moved things around. And here I am. Here I am. I wanted to get um, and do a little episode, a little shout out. Um, hopefully in December, but it didn't happen. So here I am. Happy 2019 to each and every one of you. If you are new here, you kind of took a wrong turn and bumped into my little place here on YouTube. This is a, this is my little slice of YouTube where I talk about my crochet, my knitting, and even though I haven't talked about it much, I've only had about 10 episodes in two years, um, my other textile fabric work, um, uh, which includes art quilting, which includes, before I get to the art quilting, I dye my fabric, I screen print on fabric, I do anything else I can do to fabric that puts a uh, surface design up on the cloth, and then I end up figuring out how I'm going to turn it into an art quilt. So, um, but I haven't done much of that in the last three years. In the last three years I've been kind of obsessed with this yarn yarn journey. Uh, I'm a yarn head you could kind of say. So um, that's what I've been doing and um, uh, I've been trying to work from home uh, in the last three years. So um, it's still a challenge. It's still you know what I had envisioned when I was moving my studio from an outside uh, outside spot uh, that was in an artist colony um, to home, I had envisioned something totally different. It hasn't really panned out the way that I saw it in my head, so therefore I just kind of keep trying to find my groove here, find my groove. So anyway, I am here. I have a glass of ginger ale. Or as my great grandmother would say, ginger. I got it. <laughs> so I'm only going to share with you one item, and that is a work in progress, and I'll get to it in a minute. But before I share that, I want to discuss. I want to discuss. Let me take my glasses off for this because I want you to see my eyes. <laughs> I want to discuss topic of inclusion, representation in the industry, in the industry, that means magazines or teaching, uh, retreats, uh, yarn businesses, yarn dyers, indie dyers, in this industry the inclusion of black, indigenous, and people of color. Okay. I want to say when I started this podcast, it was because this whole thing of crocheting and knitting was new to me. And I really didn't know anyone that did it. Even though I live here in Louisville, I saw... I, let me take that back. I knew people that did it, but I didn't 
They were not in my intimate circle uh, as friends. Oops, brush. So, um, and so I just, I had started learning through YouTube and was then introduced to Ravelry. And, but I will say that in YouTube, when I first started watching podcasts and being entertained by them, I then went on a search after, I don't know, months of watching and enjoying, enjoying the podcast. I then went on a search because I got to thinking, are there not any black people that do this? So I found some and was happy to find them <laughs> and subscribed immediately to their channel and watched them and was happy uh, to watch them. Uh, then I found Ravelry and I began to browse different groups and look for other people who were in my area. Um, found some. I did. But um, I still always, I and mean, I still feel uh, that I am on the outside looking in and um, haven't really and by that what I mean is I just really haven't found my, my tribe my people you know my good my good buddies <laughs> I guess and I'm okay with that but I'm still I got an eye open and um, I tell you who I, I, who I am, who I do feel very close to, uh, is Miss J of uh, J's, uh, what is her name of her podcast? I think she's an excellent teacher. Miss um, J, I call her Miss J. Um, Pearl. Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Anyway, she's down in Georgia, I think. It, uh, and uh, she's just a wonderful teacher. And I enjoy her. And, and she's kind of like my peeps a little bit. Uh, simply because I just admire her and her, her, her skill and the way she approaches her design work. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, aren't I? But I've, I still feel like I'm on the outside looking in. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I'm okay with that for the most part. Because I feel like anybody that's attracted to me will kind of know. They'll get a vibe for who I am. You know? Because who I am is... Who I am on the in the digital world is pretty much who I am, <laughs> okay? So, uh, you'll either like me or, or you don't, so. Or you may feel kind of, hmm, about me. That's okay, too. But anyway, I still feel like I'm on the outside looking in. So, I've been watching this um, play out on Instagram. Kind of like, I don't read the blogs and all of that in, in the knitting world. I don't. Um, but I do watch the podcast. And uh, so I was sort of like, hmm, okay. So after I got a gist of what's going on, because one thing I know, I've been black and female a long time, all my life pretty much. Uh, all my life, i have close to 60 years old, or close enough to 60 that I claim 60. <laughs> so, um, uh, plus my mama's been black all her life and my grandmother's been black all her life and my great grandmama has been black all her life <laughs> and female <laughs> no black and woman <laughs> just forget the and okay just say black woman oh you know but um so i pretty it didn't take long for me to get the gist of what was going on so um i was watching all the uh young women uh handle it Y'all were handling it. <laughs> and I said, 
hmm, Karen, it ain't much for you to say because they, they got this. <laughs> they got this. So anything I can do um, to empower them, though, I thought, let me go ahead and say what I, I can say. At uh, some point in my life, and it may have been when I begin to have uh, health challenges, I do have ongoing health challenges. This is just not a, an accessory. And um, <laughs> at some point, I begin to just say, you know, you know, f this stuff. I'm I'm out of here. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You know, I've always hated um, people who had hidden agendas and who played around. I, I ain't got time for that, never have. And so, um, I ended up in a position where I thought hidden agendas and playing around was pretty much the order of the day and um, so I was always on the defensive had never been so much so in all my life the last job I held so when I was out I was done I was done and I was also done explaining things to people who didn't get it regardless of their race okay because you know there's some of us that don't get it too. So I was done. I was done. And um, because at this point, I'm telling you, at this point in history, in time, there is enough resources, there's enough books that have been written that if people want to understand, if they really want to understand, they will do so. As the brown, what they call him, the brown bomber, I can't think of that boxer's name, and I'm not into boxing like that, but when the brother said, you know how to Google, don't you? I was like, who is this? Who is this man? Who is this man that's talking about he knocking folks out because of 400 years. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing him too, but that's what I took from it. <laughs> okay? So, yeah. So I, um, I was done explaining. And uh, I heard the Arthur Tony Morrison say that racism was a distraction from your work, whatever you define your work to be. Um, and I do admire those, I do admire those who are in the struggle to, and they have defined their work to be kicking the sh shit out of injustice. Um, I admire that so much. Mad, mad love for you. Uh... But yeah, I'm done, and uh, pretty much I like to, I prefer to spend my time and my money <laughs> with people who act in ways that affirm and sustain life, <laughs> regardless of what shade it comes in. So, but I tell you, there is something in this day and time, and I'm probably talking more than what I expected, but in this day and time, when they reported that 54%, and something I haven't gotten over, something that really shook me to my core, 54% of white women voters, not of any, not of any party, but of white women voters voted for the man who is holding our presidential office hostage. That shook me because I'm thinking 54%, that's one out of every two. So I begin, and this is not about party. I'm going to tell you that right now. Ain't got nothing to do with party. Because this man does not represent any political party. 
in spite of what he may have people believing. He, this is not about a par party at all. But it is about, I can't even say character. Because <coughs> he represents something to me that is um, abhorrent. So abhorrent that um, it's, so, it's vulgar. And, and dangerous. And these decisions and his words from his position will either do one of two things. They will either sustain and affirm life or they will destroy it. <laughs> and I'm not going to get off into that, but you already probably know how I feel. Um, but 54% is one out of every two. And it, ha it does have me looking at my white sisters very differently. Because I, I just don't even see how it should be that high. Now, I don't didn't think that I necessarily expected anything different from white men. Um, but white women, I did. I did expect something different. I did. And most of the people in my circle of friendship, value, justice, and I am aware of some people, white women that I know that do value justice, but yet they are struggling, struggling to decide where a beloved relative fits who does not value justice, who values something and typical to justice. So I know that there are those who are struggling with that. Um, and they have been very open with that. And I appreciate the openness. But one out of every two scares me. It scares me from extending myself in certain ways. It scares me to trust <laughs> to only so far. Because I never know when something will happen that will uh, be so offensive to me <coughs> that I will have to say something and that by me saying something will she or will she not be receptive <laughs> because again I ain't about teaching you but I don't care who you are I'm not about teaching I, I only teach so, so far and so little these days because I ain't got time. I don't have the time. So anyway, with that said, with that said, mm -hmm. I still dream of a different world, honey. I still dream of a different world. I do recognize that what is being planted, those seeds, these seeds that are being planted now is affecting children who are 8, 10 years old, even younger. And I know that based on what my grandchildren say they hear. Um, an experience. So... These children will grow up, and so they will be the um, possibly the racists of the future. And that lets me know that it will continue another couple of generations. So um, do the work, whatever you define your work and mission to be do the work and as I grow older I will do what I can to always support those who um, 
or on the side of justice. Yep. So that's my commitment, and that's who I am. And um, let's get on with the content of the show. If you've been following me, if you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting what I'm about to show you. It's my cables. <laughs> I am so proud of these cables, even though there are mistakes, so don't look too closely, but I'm going to show you. I'm still working on my daughter's poncho. I'm trying to... Yeah, this is the right side. Mm -hmm. My first time doing cables. This is about 30 inches of cables. Uh... Yeah, about 27. The ribbing is about a three and a half inches. So, yep. I'm very proud. This is the neck hole that will be a turtleneck. I'm supposed to pick up these stitches and build a turtleneck. This hole is very wonky, but I'm trusting it will work itself out. <laughs> I'm trusting. My bind off was crazy, crazy, crazy. I never did that before. And in fact, I made a, I think this is a tail that's caught, but I'm not sure, so I'm kind of scared to cut it. What I'm going to do is just kind of work over it when I uh, pick up these stitches and knit over it. But uh, So that's my plan. But I'm so proud of my cables. I really, really am. Just look at them. I think for first, I don't know, I was, cables intimidated the hell out of me. They did. I, I'm not kidding you, they did. I don't know why I was, what is that? Oh shit, it looks like my yarn's been pulled. No, I think that's, Oh shit, that's probably where I got my row mixed up. Looks like those that's a row of uh of uh pearl bumps and it should be. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I have done some tinking on this and believe me, tinking back on cables is not fun. Maybe that's even where I tink back. I'm not even sure. I thought it was up higher, though. But, yep, these are my cables. This is the left side, the right side of the poncho. The left side is 2x2 two two ribbing. 60 inches of it. <laughs> Very springy. And what I, I'm going to do, yes, these are two different colors. These will get pieced together. And then I'll pick up on the outer edges and do two by two ribbing, about three and a half inches of two by two ribbing <coughs> on both sides. So I hope you all cannot hear, I hope I'm not doing this and <coughs> my voice is being drowned out by my space heater down here. Uh, and then I'll pick up, after I sew them together, then I'll pick up for the uh, turtleneck. So this is a free pattern, uh, Lion Brands pattern. This is Lion Brands yarn, Vanish Choice. Um, and um, it's okay to use, this, but if you kind of mess up and got to go back and pull out and then re-knit, it gets very splitty is my only, um, my only complaint. And... Um, <clears throat> I'm knitting these on straight needles. I think this is another first for me. I don't believe I've used straight needles before. And I'm uh, using, these are cube, square, and they're wooden. Uh, it is a, um, what do they say, carbonized wood or pressured wood. Uh, so it's very slick, very slick. Very pointy, very pointy, so that's not a problem, and very light. Um, 
so light that I, wor I worried about them breaking, because especially in my right hand, I tend to put a lot of uh, stress in my hand when I'm knitting. I knit continental, and this hand is the one that gets extremely sore, extremely sore. Um, and I don't know if it's, it's because I'm working with such heavy yarn or not, but because I uh, this is the first time, or the straight needles even, this is the first time, excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. that I'm using the um, straight needles. Uh, so I don't know what's causing my hand to hurt. But I do love these needles. I do love these needles. It may be my imagination, but I think I drop less stitches with using these. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that is the whip that I wanted to show you. Um, it has been one that's been a long time in the making. I was really hoping that I would finish all of my whips by the end of 2018. That has not happened. I have not allowed myself to cast on anything new or go back to any of my uh, whips that I had started, uh, which I think I showed on the uh, last podcast, the Pure Joy sh uh, Shaw and... Uh, the uh, wrap that's uh, part of the, what is it, is it the Helen Stewart's Shaw Society 3, I joined that and uh, uh, was working on one of the wraps from that, but I haven't allowed myself to go back to anything until I finish this. Um, so I haven't even I just haven't cast on anything new or hooked up anything new. Uh, even though 2019, I want to focus once again on socks, and I want to include sweaters. I've made a crochet sweater and a cardigan for my granddaughter and grandson. Now I want excuse me I want to knit them something uh, a sweater. Um, each a sweater. So I have the yarn for um, my grandson's sweater and I'm just dying to start it. Uh, but I really do want to finish this poncho. I will feel so glad when I finish the poncho and I have a lace weight, lace weight yarn shawl that I wrap actually that I need to finish. Um, that's from uh, previous uh, uh, a previous uh, works in progress that I need to finish. Uh, that is also a gift. Um, so that's it. I just want to touch base, let you all know I'm, I'm still here. And I would say that I'd like to do more regular podcasts, just know podcasting and recording. And you just know that you're in my heart. Um, Hopefully I can, you know, try to get back to once a month or not that I really did that very long. But like I said, I have 10 podcasts, maybe 11 tops in two years. So <laughs> let's let's see what 2019 brings, okay? So um, with that said, I'm going to say so long and I hope to see you next month. Keep it going. Bye-bye.